Shalom and welcome back to a whole new season of Candid Conversations. Let's bring up today's question. Believe it or not, that's actually a question I get quite often. You see, my kila in San Diego is called Kila Shah Shamaim, and I often get phone calls. The people ask me, hello, is this Rabbi Halevi speaking? Is your synagogue an Orthodox synagogue? And my first answer is always, no, it's not. And before I have a chance to explain, they hang up the phone on me. What does it mean, not an Orthodox congregation? You see, today in the world of labels, you have Orthodox, Conservative, Reform, and in Orthodoxy, Open Orthodox, Modern Orthodox, Ultra Orthodox, this kind of Orthodox, that kind of Orthodox, so many different denominations, humanistic, renewal, uh, you name it, and the Jewish people have come up with a denomination. And the truth is that, yeah, I do belong to a denomination, but none of the above. I always answer, I'm a Sephardic rabbi, and my community is a Sephardic community, despite its ethnicity, rather Sephardic in philosophy. And I think that most people don't know what that means, and I guess that's what I'm here to explain. You see, I normally don't take personal questions. But this question is not so personal. It's actually at the foundation of what is the Shiviti movement that my wife and I are leading and building, and Be'ezat Hashem, everyone here is a part of. You see, it's really easy to be the rabbi of a group of people that are homogenous. See, if I'm an Orthodox rabbi, so I only have to worry about the concerns of Orthodox people. If I'm a Reform rabbi, I'm worried about my Reform congregation. If I'm a Hasidic rabbi, all I have to focus on are the Hasidic communities that are under my jurisdiction. And I find myself in a situation very often where more and more I see as the Jewish people splinter off into subcategories and subcategories and subcategories, that people are less and less responsible for the Jewish people as a whole. In my early years of studying Torah, I was able to study under some of the greatest minds of Torah and Talmud that I could find. But very quickly I realized that there was an us and a them. There's us kind of Jews and them kind of Jews. And we have no responsibility towards them. We have no achayut, we have no, no care for them in the whole world. Because we need to focus on our people. And I very quickly had to recalculate my route and say, where can I find the Chachamim, those sages that actually saw the Jewish people as a whole? You see, being a Sephardic rabbi may sound to you like a denomination or an ethnicity, but Sephardic Chachamim had no idea what Reform or Conservative or Orthodox were. In fact, you'll rarely find such a distinction between those who observe Torah Mitzvot and those who don't. Rather, Sephardic Chachamim, for the most part, were in a very difficult situation. You see, they signed up for a job not because it was easy, but precisely because it was challenging and difficult. Our job as Sephardic rabbis has always been to be leaders of communities that are not homogenous, that are not the same, where people think differently and act differently and even believe in Judaism differently. And the job of a leader is not to divide and to say, this is my group of people that I care for. Rather to say, if I'm a leader, a real leader, my job is to find a common denominator, a place to create a community, to create a religious experience in which people all the way on one extreme and the other extreme can all feel united and part of the same community. And that's what I mean when I say that I'm a Sephardic rabbi. I signed up for a job that is difficult. But the dream, the hope, the outcome that could come from here is to unify the Jewish community into one people, to create a place, a safe space for Jews of all backgrounds and Jews of all affiliations to say, when you come into this sanctuary, when you come into this place, to me, you are just a brother or a sister. That's all that you are. Rabbi Yosef Masas, one of the giants of North Africa, when he became the chief rabbi of Tlemcen in Algeria, so he moved into this new community and was told immediately that there was one gentleman in the community that began to desecrate Shabbat publicly. Maybe he opened a business, I don't know exactly what he was doing. And the first day after prayers, they saw that Rabbi Yosef Masas was in the street, and for 25 minutes he was speaking to this gentleman that was excommunicated by the Jewish community. After he finished his conversation, the president of the community ran over to Rabbi Yosef Masas and said, This is what we hired you for? You're breaking the rules on your first day here? You're speaking to somebody that we threw out of the community? And Rabbi Yosef Masas smiled and he said, My dear friend, I didn't come to this community for people like you. I came to this community for people like him for the people that feel that they have no place in the Jewish community, for the people who really want to come to the Beit HaKnesset, that really want to come to the synagogue, but they don't want to be judged on how they got to the synagogue. Because right now, they're making a choice. 
then that choice is, I want to be part of the Jewish community. Sure, am I a perfect person? Of course not. But neither are you. Neither is he. Neither is she. And why can't you allow me a religious experience of coming to the Beit HaKnesset, coming to the community, and feeling just like everybody else? On this Yom Kippur, I sing together with you the same songs. I yearn for the same God that you yearn for. Allow me space. And it's incumbent on the rabbis of the communities, on the leaders of the Jewish people, to abandon these labels that don't belong on human beings. To abandon orthodoxy once and for all. To embrace a Judaism that believes that we're all brothers and sisters and all part of the same community. Because the danger of holding on to these labels is so terrible and so devastating. You know, we talk about the Holocaust, and I'm not comparing, God forbid, evil with evil. But we mourn, and every child in a Jewish community knows that we lost six million of our brothers and our sisters at the hands of the evil Germans, Yimach Shemam Zicham, may their memory of the Nazis be obliterated and erased. We know that, that number six million. My dear friend, do you know how many Jews there are in the world today? We're at about 13 million Jews, so give or take, a little more, a little less, depending who you ask and who took the census. From those 13 million Jews, do you know how many Jews identify as Torah observant, as Shabbat observant, as Kashrut observant? You're hitting almost the number of 2 million. That means that in our desire to hold on to orthodoxy, to create exclusive communities for those who observe like us and eat like us and worship like us, we've eliminated 11 million of our brothers and sisters from being part of our community. My Chachamim didn't do that. You see, in a traditional Sephardic community which slowly but surely are disappearing from the face of this earth. Everybody, my aunt who drives on Shabbat but eats kosher and my uncle who keep Shabbat, but might not eat kosher. My family members, my cousins, my relatives, it doesn't make a difference if there's going to be a mechitza at their wedding or not. When it comes to the chuppah, they're going to have a rabbi during that wedding. And we're going to be there standing with them, regardless of our level of observance. When it comes to a bar mitzvah for their child, they're going to bring their child to the Beit Knesset. When you ask a person, say, do you believe in Hashem? The answer unanimously is, absolutely. We have to find our brothers and sisters and what unites us and brings us together. And that is our job as Chachamim. That is our job as sages. And that's our job as Jews who are looking forward. How many more Jews are you willing to lose? How many more millions are you willing to abandon before you realize that holding on to this exclusive country club is not worth it? It's not working. It doesn't help. There was a time, even in this country, where when someone's child would marry out of the Jewish community, they would sit shiva on them. Literally would mourn them as if they died. And look how that worked for them. Do you know how many Jews today, not just intermarried, one generation, or two generations, or three generations, they don't even know that they're Jewish. There are 600,000 Jewish people in the United States today who identify as Christians. That's a number that should frighten you. That's the amount of Jews that left Egypt. Because we've decided, again, to abandon all those who are different than us. Our Chachamim would have never let someone like that run away. You want? You did something wrong? That's okay. It's a problem, but you're still part of my community. It's a problem, but you're still part of my family. I expect you still at the Pesach Sedem. I still expect you at the synagogue on Yom Kippurim. I still love you, and I still want you, because my love towards you is unconditional. My dear friends, let's do it together. Let's get rid of these labels. Let's abandon orthodoxy once and for all. Because our Chachamim knew of no such terms. Rather, there was Am Yisrael, there was one God, one people, and one Torah, and one leader that had to unite all of those things together. I know it's a difficult task. But Am HaNetzach, Lo Mefached Medech Aruga, in the words of the Chief Rabbi of Israel, Harav Avram Tzach Kuen Kuk, the people of eternity are not afraid of a very long journey. It will be a long journey. We will come out victorious, like we came out of every journey until today. Is Allah Hashem, I pray and I bless us all that we will be able to create communities without labels in the spirit of Chachmei Sfarad who united and did not divide who are able to find the common denominators and bring all kinds of people together under the wings of the Shekhinah. Let us be from their students. Let us be from the students of Aharon HaKohen 
our high priest, who was not Ashkenazi or Sephardic. Rather, he was one that loved people. He loved the Torah, and he loved to bring the people close to HaKadosh Baruch to their Father in Heaven. Let us be from his students, and do that soon, God willing.